Hi, I'm uh, Gavin Renwick. I'm, uh, I've been at the U of A for two years now. Utilising art design and architecture, not just as a way to produce stuff, a way to produce objects, material, materiality, but as a, as a holistic method that can deal with complexity, that can, you know, that, that can look laterally at complex issues, which is a very appropriate way to engage with the Aboriginal world and the Northern world. My work attempts to take on notions of uh, hy hybridity. One can associate modernity very much with colonisation, with assimilation. To move towards, or at least to attempt to define what a possible post-colonial world can be, not rejecting the past but not denying the reality of the present as well, is this idea of to me, this idea of hybridity, which is synonymous with post-colonialism. Many northern languages, many Denny languages, there's actually no distinction between inside and outside space. It's just space. It's, you're, you're at home. You're, it's homeland. So if you're, if you're beginning to delineate physical space, architectural bounded space, then how do you even negotiate that conceptual reality of that limitless sense of space, of, of, of that lack of... of uh, barrier between inside and outside. These drawings behind me, for example, were, were, were me beginning to generate an understanding of that. Government officials often express intense frustration at because people are given houses, in inverted commas, and then they just build vernacular structures and things around them. And then you realise, if you're prepared to see, that what these structures are, are expressing what the Western imposed government house can't do. Because these houses, their interior planning, are very much designed, they're, they're houses that you and I would understand and comfortably live in. They're designed for a Southern uh, Western lifestyle. And they fundamentally fail to, to work for people, like for hunters. And so what people do is, one, to recreate, I think, their idea of camp and their idea of being on the land. They build all these structures around the government house, reflect their, their lifestyle uh, symbolically, but also importantly in a utilitarian sense. In fact, the whole gallery in some ways, uh, and all the, the multimedia elements of this gallery, the reason why I have the studio there is to make sense of all these multifarious part pieces of work because uh, they reflect my design process. They, uh, they are my research and development that all go into what I'm doing next door, which is designing a, a cultural building for a very traditional community called Samba Ke, or Trout Lake in English. And as with the rest of the exhibition, all these different elements that you can hear, I'm sure, in the video, um, be it text, be it video interviews, be it visual information, and all this is information that's going into this part of the gallery, which is my, my working studio. Through interviewing, through interviewing the community, we've come up with a whole bunch of functions that the community weren't reflected within this structure. Fitness area, teaching repair shop, and residences. By splitting up uh, each of these functions into single dwellings, it becomes somewhat, somewhat easier to plan out. I mean, one big building would be incongruous in a community like this. We've decided to reflect back on the foundation myth of the community, which is the giant, uh, before time, the giant lay down, created the indentation in the earth that filled to become Trout Lake, Sambake. And so uh, we've got a series of single space buildings that, that effectively are the spine of the giant. Each building is, the vert is, is a vertebrae. In the middle of the building, there's effectively a, a utility building, but I like to think of it as the vital organs, as the you know the, the, the of, of, of the giant, and so by consolidating all the uh, services and utility into one building, it will also aid in the maintenance of the structure. Some units will be very traditional and uh, and seasonal, and that's part of the that's I mean that's part of I think my responsibility is to interpret architecture in this sense as as four-dimensional. How do we incorporate not just uh, space, the three dimension of space, but how do we incorporate time into the structure? So how does the building change and adapt at different moments of the year? So in winter, the, does the building uh, close up on itself and in summer, like, you know, like flower like, like open up uh, to the environment and all the functions and practical elements of the building begin to spill out into the landscape around?
We're going to try as much as possible to, to actually manufacture the, the, the building within the community. And that sense of, to generate that sense of propriety as well, that sense of ownership. Because so much in a northern community comes from the south, comes in on the winter road or is flowing in. So much belongs to someone else, the government, whatever. You know, uh, whereas hopefully this building will in, will in every sense, uh, physically and symbolically belong to the community.